Hello and welcome to Django for Everybody. Today we're going to talk about using the shell. It's one of the early assignments in the class and I just kind of want to walk you through things. Now you might ask yourself, why are we using this old-fashioned command line interface? Everything that I do is pointy quick clicky or I just move my finger and things work. And the answer is yes, for end users we try to make things as easy as possible, but so, there's always a server behind that kind of cool stuff that you're building. And that server, 99% of the time, doesn't have a clicky graphical user interface. It has a command line interface, a textual interface, where it gives you a prompt, you type some stuff, and you hit enter. You type some more stuff, and you hit enter. And Linux is by far the most popular server system on the planet. And so if you're anywhere near the server, uh, it doesn't hurt to understand a little bit how this works. You don't have to be a wizard, but the whole idea of this assignment is to give you some sense of what you're dealing with and uh, weird things that might happen while you're using this command line. So we're going to use Python anywhere as we do in the class, but the concept of the shell and the Linux user interface, that's universal across servers. Python Anywhere just gives you a free one. Otherwise, you'd get one from Amazon or Google or uh, Windows Azure. So here you are, you're logged into Python Anywhere. You go into the Consoles tab and you can start a new console. In the console, you can just run Python interactively if you want. You can run a MySQL shell that connects to your MySQL database, which we'll have later. I prefer to not use any of these things except the bash shell. The bash is just, there's variations in the Linux user interface and bash is just one of them. And so you may not use bash, you may use ZSH or SH or something else, but they all kind of have common things with little tiny subtle differences. So I'm going to start a bash shell and it's going to take a little bit here to go da -da 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 do its little thing here. And it's setting things up. Part of this is that there are hundreds of thousands of people using Python anywhere and it has to build you a your own interface. Now, the dollar sign prompt is traditionally the prompt that it says it's waiting for input. So I can type a command and then I can hit enter. And it says that is not a good command. There is a, there is a help, it's called man, man ls that tells you, so that's the ls command, like what is in the ls command? And then it goes into a page. Now you'll notice that we're not scrolling here, it pauses at the bottom, and I'm gonna hit the Q key to get out of that. Okay, so man is kind of like your help, and man stands for manual. Back in the days when you had big books, Right? You had these big books that were the manuals that you would reach up on your shelf and open it up. This is an online version of a great big book. So the first thing in this class in particular that you have to learn how to do, and there's a whole assignment to set up your Django environment uh, with the right version of Python. The rest of these, many of these commands would work without that, but here on Python Anywhere we tend to build that and that's a separate assignment where you set that up. And the prompt you see changes to say you're working in a Python virtual environment. The first thing you want to do to verify that things are working well is check the version by typing Python dash dash version and that tells you what version of Python. At this point you should be using a relatively high version of Python, Python, say 3.8 or later, um, and then uh, a relatively recent Django version. So let's talk about some shell commands. So the first shell command is ls, I showed you the man page for that, and that lists the current files in the current working directory. ls minus l lists them with some detail, including the size and last modification date and the owner of the file. And that little DRWX stuff on the left, well, that's the permissions. And there is RWX, 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 and one is the uh, permission that the owner would have, um, fellow members of their group, and then anyone, including anonymous users. And so you notice that we have more permission, we have lots more permissions than, um, than others. So the next command is PWD, PWD, Print Working Directory. And so what happens is, is Unix, Linux, is a multi-user system and our account name is dj 4 And so slash home is where all the home directories are. And home dj 4 is the home directory for the user named dj 4 e So cd is change directory. Now if you type cd by itself, you go back to your home directory. So if I go cd space Django project, oh, and this is another thing. 
there is what's called command line completion. So I know that I'm typing a directory here that exists, djan tab underscore tab, and it then I don't have to know all the names. So you see that Django Projects is one of my folders, and if it's unique, it completes it for it. So as I'm hyping, if I need to complete a file name or a folder name, I can use the tab key. The other thing about this, and if I do a PWD, you can see now I'm in home DJ Free Django projects, and it's giving me a context, right? I'm still in my home directory, but now I'm going down into folders and uh, directories and files. Now, if I type the command CD, it will go back to my home directory, because now I'm down in a subdirectory, and I do a PWE, and you see I'm back in my home directory. Here's another trick that I really want you to learn. Up arrow. You can scroll. I'm up arrow, down arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. I can scroll up to a previous command and then hit enter and then run it again. This will save you a bunch of time. Okay? So I'm sitting in this folder. So let's go back and take a look at the other things I want to cover. Uh, da -da 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 -da. You can use the tilde on a CD command. And you'll see that it's showing this tilde in, in the current prompt, cd tilde slash django underscore projects. And that will go all the way up to the home directory and then work its way down. So if you're like, where am I? You can say, go to tilde slash, and then, then you know what that folder name is. Uh, let's see, do I have any files here I can remove? Let's go back into my home directory, do an ls, and see some files. Uh, db.zap, let's just get rid of it. rmdb.zap. Boop, it's gone. Now we didn't put it in the trash can, we removed it. It does it. So you'll notice that db.zap is no longer in my list of files. So be careful with the rm command, but it's quite powerful and useful. Um, <clears throat> so this grep command, uh, grep is searches all the files. So if you look, I've got lots and lots and lots of files. And so I'm going to say grep minus r, that means recursive, for a string, autos create star in all my files. Now I got a lot of files here, so this is gonna be a long grep. <clears throat> but sometimes, and it works from the current working directory. Let, let me go into CD Django projects. And then let's go into, uh, da, 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 da. let's see if crud, uh, no, let's go into my ads. Chucklist, I think it might be called Chucklist, yeah. So this is my one of my, you know, later we'll get this. But I'm going to run this grep command, and it's going to find every e example in every file in this folder and below where the string autos underscore create exists. So that means grep minus r means recursively go deep and down the tree, autos underscore create is whatever string you want to put in, and then star means all the files, but then it recursively goes through all the files. And so you will see, oh, I didn't have that. Let's see, um, autos create, let's look for the word, I don't know, model. Let's look for the word model in all of these files and below. Oh, so there you go. So now I can see that, um, this is the files. Some of these files like PyCache are junk, but you know, let's see where I've got a model in my file right there. Adds four. So there's this, there, it shows me the file name and the string. And, and usually what you're looking for is maybe a typographical error that you've seen in an error message. So that's the shell interface. And again, part of what I'm gonna wanna show you is for you to know when you're talking to the shell, because you're not always talking to the shell. If it ends in a dollar sign prompt, usually you're talking to the shell. So let's take a look at what it might look like in different situations. So sometimes you just run Python interactively. And if you've taken a Python course, this is the REPL, the read, evaluate, something loop. Um, so you just type Python and it's running Python interactively. Now you're still sitting in a prompt, okay? And so now that's not the same thing. That's not Linux talking to you. That's Python talking to you. You're running the command Python on Linux, and that Python command is asking for input. So it expects you to type Python. Hello world. Of course we're going to type hello world. And that reads the Python, parses it, and then executes it. Now if you're in this and you type ls, it's like, I don't know what to do. I have no idea. PWD. I have no idea what you're doing because you're not in the shell. So students come to me and go like, I keep typing PWD and it's giving me name errors. Like, well, that's because you're in Python, not in the shell. 
So you have to know how to exit. And you do that with quit, open paren, close paren, enter. And now you're back to the happy little dollar sign prompt. And now you can say PWD and it will work, right? So part of it is recognizing what you're interacting with based on what the prompt looks like. Okay, so that's the Python interface. Now, if you end up with a more than one line Python statement, you, that, that, that the sh three chevrons prompts turns into a dot, dot, dot. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to run Python again. I'm just cursoring up Python. And I can say for i in range 5 colon. Now you see that the prompt is turned into a dot, dot, dot. And I have to do an indent, of course. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, print i. And it's still thinking that I'm in this for loop. And so it's saying, are you still doing more stuff in the for loop? I could put another line in this for loop. I could say print second line. And then I can hit the enter and say, I'm done with the for loop. And then we'll actually read the for loop, run the for loop, execute it five times with i being 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But the body loop has two things. And then when it's done with this sort of continuation, dot, dot, dot is like, more, I need more. I'm not done yet. Whatever you typed, it's not finished. Now I'm back to the standard Chevron prompt, at which case I would type quit. And now I'm back to the shell prompt. See? The whole idea is to be able to recognize, like, don't get lost because it's ask, you're, not, you're talking to the wrong thing. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. Now, later we'll have you talking to uh, your database, and SQLite is one of the databases that we use. And so we can, um, I'm going to go back into my home directory, cd pwd ls. And so we see this file db to SQLite 3, that is where SQLite stores its data. So the command is SQLite 3, and then you give it as a parameter the name of the file, db.sqlite3. All right? So that's going to read that, and now you see the prompt has changed to SQLite greater than. And that's because I can't say ls here. It's like, what do you mean? This also shows the continuation prompt, because it expects commands to stop. What is happening? To me, it just stays in this dot, dot, dot arrow. And that's because all SQL commands end in semicolon. And so it's just like, I haven't seen a semicolon yet, so you must still be typing. Now it's like, oh, you just not only did you do semi, uh, I finally got a semicolon, but it's still terrible SQL, structured query language. Okay? So this SQLite or the dot, dot, dot arrow right? That is, that is SQLite or the SQLite continuation, because that's what we're dealing with, with the dot, dot, dot. And a lot of students get confused when they see that dot, dot, dot arrow, and they, I'm like, just type a semicolon. They're like, yeah, I was just trying to get it to stop asking me stuff. Okay? But, so that's not what you type. What we are going to type is a command. There's a, two kinds of commands. Dot tables is one kind of command. The commands that start with dot are actually commands to SQLite to itself. And that dot table says, what tables are in this database? Oh, and this one doesn't have any tables. So I'm going to get out of this one and go into a database that has tables, because this is the one in my home directory. Um, and so I'm going to say dot quit to get out of this. Ah, how do I get out? Right? You'll notice I even had, I don't even remember what this is. So I'm going to go into Django Projects. I'm going to go into my site, which is the place you're going to be working, and I do an ls, and you'll see that I got a dbusqlite here as well. It's a different one because it is just a different one. I had one in my home directory, now I got one, two folders down in Django Projects, my site. Keep hitting tab and then db.sqlite. Now I'm going to say dot tables, and I'm going to have a bunch of tables. Look at that. I got a whole bunch of tables. And this is not exactly your code. This is my code. This is later in the semester. But I can say select star from polls to underscore choice. Now that is an SQL command, and you'll learn about that later. It does end in a semicolon. It's got, you know, select is one of the things I could type, update, delete. Or, you know, we'll learn a bit of SQL as the course progresses. Oh. I didn't type it right, but watch, I'm going to use the up arrow key. Up arrow, back, 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 back. Oh, for polls, two, choice, boom. 
So that's the two lines that are in there. And again, later you will understand uh, what that is. And then to get out of this, I type dot quit, which is different than the Python, which is quit, open paren, close paren. So you got to remember that if you're in a, one of these things, you're, you got to get out of that. Okay, so that's another thing. Then there is the Django shell, and we'll use that later. And you can say, and so this has to work in a folder that has the file manage.py in it. And that's basically a Python project. And you have to run the manage.py, Python manage pi that says run the manage.py file. And then I'm going to give it another command called shell. So that says load up manage.py and then drop me into a Django shell. So you'll do a lot of things to say Python manage pi in like Python manage pi check, which we check to see if there's something broken in our, our configuration for this application, for this project. And the answer is, oh, you're not broken, so that's good. But I want to show you the shell because I'm trying to show you user interfaces that you might get stuck into and how to get out of those. So now you notice that it looks exactly like the Python shell, and I can type Python commands. And you might say, okay, what's the difference? I can type print hello world, and it says hello world. I can say quit open print to close print. But what's happened is Python has run manage.py and loaded your entire Django application into this Python instance. And so there are commands like, uh, let me find a command here. From, now this is a Python statement. Now I think I gotta change this in this particular thing to be polls too. For yours it'll be polls. Yeah, so that ran a Python, but it imported a bunch of code from my models.py file. Again, later in the course, okay? And then I can run a command to create an in-memory model to create a brand new question in this model. Oops, I didn't mean to do the quit. And so that actually, I mean, we can print Q to see what's in Q. Yeah, it's a question and it's got the text of hello world in it. We could save it. And so there are things you can do in the Django shell that you can't do in the Python shell, but it's a Python shell plus a bunch of preloaded Django stuff. So you might have a continuation line, uh, but then you, you leave by quit, open print, close print. And now we're back to the Linux command prompt because there's a dollar sign there. LS minus L, PWD, that all that Linux stuff is working. And so that's basically my quick introduction. Again, I'm, you know, you'll learn all this as we go. There's a lot more to it. Um, and we'll give you each of these commands. We'll have, you'll have whole sets of commands to do. And I just wanted you at this beginning to get a kind of a picture of what's going on in the command line uh, interface. Okay, cheers.